Hello, and welcome to tonight's homework help for Thursday night, January 10th, 2013. We're going to jump right in with equivalent numbers review. Okay, the first problem reads, write 91% as a decimal. So uh, what we want to do is think of uh, after the 1, uh, since we don't see a decimal, you can, you can kind of pretend that there's a decimal there, and you essentially move it two places to the left. That'll give you your decimal value. So um, I'm not going to tell you what the answer is. You should be able to figure that out. Okay. Um, here, uh, write one, uh, 0.1 as a percent or 0 0.1 as a percent. We're going to do the opposite. Since we're going to write it as a percent, we're going to move the decimal place one, two places to the right and then tack on a percent symbol. Okay. Um, in this problem here, it says shade one-third of the rectangle. So you're going to want to just use your pencil and shade what you think is about a third of the rectangle to demonstrate that. Uh, here it says list three fractions equivalent to one quarter, one over four. Okay, So we'll go over that one uh, more in depth in a second. Um, but uh, let's move on. Simplify the fraction 12 over 20. So that's what we've been doing uh, in class since Tuesday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, we've been learning how to simplify the fraction. So we have to find a number that divides evenly into 12 that also divides evenly into 20. I'm going to find the biggest of those numbers, divide top and bottom by that number, uh, keeping the value the same but changing the top and bottom numbers to something smaller and more manageable. Uh, next we have list and order from least to greatest. So we're going to have to try and figure out based on our values or what we calculate as the values of each of these fractions, we're going to have to figure out which one we're going to put first, which one we'll put second, which one we'll put third, and which one we'll put fourth and fifth. So the first one should be the one of least value and all the way to the one of greatest value. Um, here it says convert uh, 24 over 25 to a percent. Uh, here we want to think of, well, what number uh, Percent compares all numbers to 100. So we're going to want to convert that denominator, 25, to 100. Well, 25 times a certain number equals 100. So you, once you figure out what that number is, you're going to multiply the top by that same number. Okay. So whatever you multiply the bottom by, you'll multiply the top by, which is kind of the reverse of simplifying the fraction. Um, and so you'll, you'll have 100 on the bottom and the number you have on the top will be your percent. So you can then take that number that you have on the top and uh, drop the division by 100 and write a percent after it instead. Uh, here we have convert 18% to a simplified fraction. So uh, that's what we were doing on, on Tuesday and Wednesday. So 18% uh, compares 18 to 100, so that there would be your fraction. And then you're going to find uh, the greatest common factor between 100 and 18. You're going to find the biggest number that divides evenly into both 18 and 100. Uh, and we're going to divide top and bottom by that number to write it as a simpler fraction. Um, okay, so anyways, I'm going to move back up here to list three fractions equivalent to one quarter. So here, essentially what we're trying to do is we're taking the fraction one quarter and we're going to come up with three new fractions that are equivalent to one quarter. Uh, the denominator doesn't have to be anything in particular, so I could say, um, let's see here, I'm going to erase that actually, and I'll write, since we have to do three of them, I'll do one quarter here, one quarter here, and one quarter here. Okay, so then uh, we will find uh, equivalent fractions to each of these quarters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the exact same number of each of these. So this one I'll multiply top and bottom by 2. This one I'll multiply top and bottom by 3. And this one I'll multiply top and bottom by 4. Even though I made a mistake here that this one should be a 3. Okay, so on the top one uh, here I have 1 times 2 on the top over 4 times 2 on the bottom. So that's equal to 1 times 2 is 2, and 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, so that's an equivalent fraction to 1 quarter. Um, uh, and the next one down, 1 times 3 is 3. 4 times 3 on the bottom is 12. So 3 over 12 is an equivalent fraction to 1 quarter. Um, and then here we have 1 times 4 on the top is 4, and 4 times 4 on the bottom is 16. And that also is an equivalent fraction 
to one quarter, okay? So these are all equivalent fractions. These actually all would simplify to one quarter, okay? Um, so uh, good luck with all that. If you have any questions about a specific one and need help with a specific one, go ahead and uh, send a text to either Mr. Schlepper or Mr. Turrieta. And let's go ahead and move on to the back side. Okay, here it says uh, we're on patio plants, and it says wife Lynn wants to put plants into rectangular wooden boxes to decorate her patio. She has lots of boxes in different sizes. Box A holds three plants. Box B holds two plants. Box C holds six plants. Box D holds four plants, and box E holds five plants. Uh, it says that y Fun has bought 12 plants, so we know she, we're working with 12 plants. She is now deciding which boxes to use, okay? So taking a look at all this, uh, we have um, how many size A boxes could she fill with these 12 plants? Show how you figured this out. Well, you got to figure out how many plants can fit into the size A box. There's three there, and then you got to figure out, well, if she has 12 plants, how many of these boxes would you need? Um, so you're going to basically divide 12 by the number of plants that fit into a size A box, and that'll tell you how many of those size A boxes you'll need. If you have a remainder, then you're going to need uh, an extra box for that remainder, okay? Uh, y Fun has only three boxes that are size D. Will her 12 plants fit into these? Okay, well, size D is uh, four plants per box. So we got to think if she has three of those boxes that hold four plants per box, we're going to have to multiply the number of boxes she has times the number of plants each box holds to know how many plants total she can hold with all of these. And use that to figure out if she can, will it hold all 12 of her plants. Uh, you show that through multiplication here. Uh, number three, if y Fun decides to fill two size E boxes with her plants, how many plants will she have left over? So you have to think two times how many plants fit into size E box equals a certain number. Then you're going to subtract that number from the 12 plants that she has, and whatever is left over is what you put your answer here, and show your math below. Okay, that's it for this homework. Uh, if you uh, need any further help or assistance or have any questions, please contact Mr. Schlepper and myself. Our information is on the little graphic below uh, question three, as it is on all homeworks. Okay, uh, good night, good luck, and go Bears! Rawr!